Is this it? There you go. 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 Come back anytime. Welcome. This one? Thank you. Please come again. Hello! Tell your friends! Hello there. This one, yes? I thank you. Return soon, please. I'll take it. Thanks. Wow, I am delighted. My favorite food. You've got to try this. That looks delicious. Goddess, forgive me. I've just got to indulge. That sounds nice. Let's make a delicious meal. You're not going to throw away that vegetable, right? What a waste. We should use it in our dish. Yes, I agree. Okay, but I should really have a cute dance to go along with it. Yeah! I'll sing so loud that my voice is gonna reach the sky! <sighs> oh, hello, Professor. How nice to see you. You caught me off guard. I was actually just thinking about you. Just a moment ago? Well, I... I... I, I am afraid I just do not understand you. When we first met, I sensed something different about you. Something mysterious. And now I am convinced your existence itself is very special. Thinking on it, I know it to be true. You have a crest that should have been lost long ago. You wield the sword of the Creator as if it is nothing. Your hair and eye color changed on that day five years ago. To the same sort of color as mine and my brother's. I do not know. My brother refuses to speak to me of it. Since then, you have led us into battle and, thus far, we have always come out victorious. Your comrades and colleagues adore you. They believe in you, in your strength. I doubt there is a single soul who is likened to you. Who are you, really? I simply do not understand. Whatever the case may be, having hair like mine is proof that there is something exceptional about you. I may as well come forward with things. I too am unlike others. Surely you recall when I was targeted, specifically for my blood? I may not be special in the ways you are, but my blood is rare. It seems the two of us share a special... differentness. 
I also believe that we are bound together in some way. Of this I am certain. Therefore, I intend to stay by your side and watch over you. Your existence must be preserved at all cost. Certainly those are the words of a hero. Let us unite our powers. Together, we are unstoppable! <sighs> ah, there you are. Hello. No, oh, yes. Apologies. I'm struggling with some unpleasant thoughts. Since the war began, I've ended so many lives. You and your students got your hands dirty as well. Nobody forced you all to join the fight, of course. You did so of your own volition. Still, there must be something very wrong with the world for it to make children into killers. That's true enough. We've all gotten older. Ah, listen to me. I'm sorry for being so glum. <laughs> well said. In truth, I don't think any expression will improve my looks. I'm a brute, no matter what face I pull. Ah, you really are just like Gerald. When I was down in the dumps, he'd cheer me up with a playful quip. He gave me his library of jokes, but when I tell one of them, nobody laughs at the punchline. They laugh at me. You, on the other hand, well, you inherited the old man's comic talents. I'm feeling pretty perky now, all thanks to you. I can't stop this war by feeling gloomy about it. Onward, to a brighter future! To tell you the truth, that was another line I picked up from Gerald. He taught me everything about life. He was more important to me than anyone in the world. Apart from you, perhaps. Come on, no need to blush. It's the truth. When I look at you or see you fighting in battle, it's like I'm seeing a sibling. But at the same time, it's like seeing something sacred and powerful. Something I must defend. You're so important to the future of Fodlan, and to me. I promise to continue protecting you with the strength of a knight and the love of a big brother. I guess that makes sense when you consider the age difference between us and my closeness to Geralt. Regardless, in the name of the Captain, I swear to keep you safe. You're welcome to return the favor, should you feel so inclined. Eating delicious food really takes my worries away. This is my favorite. I am rather happy you went out of your way to pick it, Professor. I like this dish. It was my father's favorite. This looks delicious. Let's eat. It's too rare that we get a chance to kick back and stuff our faces. Come on, Shamir, time to gorge! I apologize for my partner, Professor. Yummy! Who made this? I'll have to give my compliments to the chef. 
Ah, oh, I can eat so much of this stuff. My stomach's growling just thinking about it. What brings you out so late? Oh, um, that was likely my voice. I've been worrying about something. I asked you once to help me achieve my goal of being a person who can simply nap all day. Then I thought, if the world becomes a peaceful place, all my crest research might be for naught. Well, I don't see how crests have much use in times of peace. Certainly there are crests that make you stronger and could be used in engineering. And I suppose crests that increase magical abilities might help doctors heal injuries. Still, the possibilities seem limited. It's as if crests were designed to be used only in times of war. Their power meant to bring about death and destruction. I cannot prove what I say is true, but suppose for a moment that it is. The longer this war goes on, the more useful my crest research becomes. But if the war were to end today, we would go on living, perhaps not using the power of our crests at all. It is truly my dream to be a crest scholar, but I also dream of all the wonderful naps peace would bring. Saying it all out loud, it feels a rather stupid thing to worry over. Knowledge or peace? Sleep or war? You know you're right. In the end, maybe it's not that stupid after all. It certainly isn't to me. Although if I stop researching crests, I'll have one less excuse to spend time with you. Professor, don't make faces like that. People like you, who listen to my blathering, and then nod and smile as though what I say matters? People like you are very precious to me. Is this it? There you go. Come back anytime. Welcome. Will this one do? Many thanks. Come back soon. Hey there. Is this it? There you go. Come back anytime. Professor. I will not yield! Yeah! It's been a while since I had such a close call. If not for you, Professor, I wouldn't have made it. I didn't expect to be ambushed on a simple scouting mission. Yes, my objective was to gauge the enemy's strength. I'd say I was successful. <laughs> I have to ask, Professor. What brought you here? Hmm. So you came to protect me. I'm beginning to understand why your allies love you. These are selfish times. One doesn't expect to encounter selflessness. You're kind. In that respect, I'd say you're much like Lady Rhea. Of course. It's thanks to her kindness that I'm here today. I was an outlaw in Fargus. She took me in and let me live here. Didn't I tell you? I was born into House Karen in Fargus. They used to call me Thunderstrike Cassandra. I was implicated in a plot to kill the king. It was a totally false accusation, of course. I had to flee the kingdom, and the archbishop took me in. 
I used to be a student at the Academy, so I knew I'd be safe here. Lady Rhea saved me once when I was a student, you know. I don't really remember what happened. I was badly injured and near death. Lady Rhea took care of me. She didn't mind getting dirty. She took my muddied, bloodied body into her arms. Since then, Lady Rhea has been my inspiration. I will always serve her, protect her, love her. For some reason, when I think about Lady Rhea, your face comes to mind. You've become an important presence in my life. I wasn't expecting you to have a positive response. I'm not thrilled about it personally. I am still going to keep my eye on you. Not so I can report to Lady Rhea, though. Just because I want to. learned a lot. <laughs> That's a relief. <laughs> You're making me blush. I've learned a lot. That went way better than expected. It was quite a challenge. Easier than I thought. Don't stop. Keep it coming. It was quite a challenge. It was quite a challenge. That wasn't difficult. Your praise is appreciated. That wasn't difficult. Let's do this again. Let's do this again. the idea. Maybe I've grown. That was nice. I managed to get it. Oh, I'll get the next one too. Maybe I've grown. Professor. I'm here, Professor. I like this tea. It's so tasty. Thanks. Ooh, making me hungry. Uh-huh. 
You seem tired, Professor. The best cure for sleepiness is sleep. If your muscles are hungry, you gotta feed them. Mmm, tasty. Right. Whoa. Hmm. Professor! Huh? What? Huh? Whoa. You wanna see my muscles? Ouch. Hot. What? Huh? How about that? Whoa. If your muscles are hungry, you gotta feed them. No way. Whoa. Thanks for the tea. But next time, let's stick to meat. Hey, Professor. Actually, I ran into that thief while I was shopping just now. Maybe you don't remember. It's been quite a while. The man who stole the book from that market stall. I saw him on the street with his kid. They were both so grateful. It's a really nice feeling. Yeah, but... It did seem like they were still having trouble getting by. I guess what you said to me back then was right. My actions didn't really solve the problem. I can't help everyone no matter how much I try. If I had the money or power, maybe. But I don't. You know, a long time ago, Leonardo said nearly the same thing to me. I think it was when I tried to look after the horses all on my own. <laughs> I really messed that up. He said, you're not quite ready for this yet, but there's no need to rush. I know I can't help very many people right now, but I think doing what I can for those I see in front of me is still worthwhile. I have to believe that, at least. <laughs> Thanks. That's reassuring to hear. What about you, Professor? Has anything been troubling you lately? I'd be happy to help, as long as it's not looking after horses. <laughs> you might not want to trust me with that. Hey, don't be that way. There's got to be something. It doesn't have to be serious. I genuinely enjoy helping people. It's a great feeling making someone smile. So if there's anything I can do for you, I want to do it. Because I care about you. Uh, I didn't mean it in a romantic way. I just really look up to you. So what'll it be? How can I help? Of course. I'd be glad to cook with you. Regardless of the quality, this is a good chance for us to prove our solidarity. Professor, let me sing for you. Do you not like my voice? It would make a Pegasus dance with joy. Another gain from mortal risk. We're teaming up. Let's show them what we're made of. We did some great work. Good fuel for a scheme. I must always improve.
Let's see it in action. Can I use this off the battlefield? I'm glad I'm getting better. It's starting to feel like a part of me. I'll do my best with this. Okay, no big deal, really. <laughs> Had I room to grow? Now my success is guaranteed. That took too much effort. Pull my weight. <laughs> the weak fall, the strong live. Did it again. I've gotten stronger, haven't I? I'm only 
getting better with age. You're incredible! Growing stronger suits me. That's a win for everyone. Truly impressive. Show! I've gotten stronger, haven't I? Leave it to me. I'm impressed. Professor, did you want to see me? This tea is my favorite. You have very good taste, Professor. Thank you so much. Ooh, too hot. Yes. As I continue to grow, I've learned not to regret the choices I've made. But I take my skin care very seriously. Hmm? <laughs> oh, was there something you were looking for? Wow, I know it's a luxury, but I take my skin care very seriously. for inviting me. I delivered our letter to Fort Mercius. I don't think they suspected anything. I knew I was right to entrust that task to you. You've got that honest kind of face that makes it easy to fool people. Is that meant to be a compliment? What did you write in the letter? 
I informed them that reinforcements were on the way. It would have been suspicious for troops to show up unannounced. So, the plan is... We'll disguise ourselves as reinforcements from the Imperial capital and sneak into Fort Mercius. Oh, you used my disguise plan after all. We've also procured Imperial Army uniforms. Ooh, good work. I knew this was the only way. However, that alone wouldn't be enough. You did say the plan needed a little more refinement. Are you going to dress up like Edelgard, Claude? <laughs> I'm not sure that would accomplish much. In the letter, I included the name of the Imperial General leading the reinforcements. While we're heading to the fort, a separate army is going to attack us. We're going to be attacked? That's all just for show, though. It'll be our allies who are attacking us. Oh, I get it. We're going to make it look like the Alliance is attacking Imperial reinforcements. Right. When the troops in the fortress panic and open up the gates, we're in. I'd love nothing more than for this plan to work, but I've got some bad news for you. Apparently, the notorious Death Knight has been placed in charge of defending Fort Mercius. The one who kidnapped Flame. The Death Knight. I did not wish to ever think of him again. He got some acclaim in the battle to subjugate Western Fargus. They say he holds the most military prowess in the Empire. Even so, we've got Teach here to command us. All will be well. You have to trust us. <sighs> so your big plan is to just trust your professor? Really, boy? Under the professor's guidance, I'm sure we'll manage somehow. We're counting on the tactics you learned from Captain Gerald. Prepare yourselves, everyone. It's time. Teach, this is for your ears only, but there's actually one more part to my plan. I had hoped it wouldn't come to this, but I have no choice. Absolutely. We can't afford to hold anything back. Thanks to Edelgard's strength, the Imperial Army is more unified than I would have expected. It was a painful realization, but after our battle at Grander Field, it's clear that we can't win if we don't pull out all the stops. I also realized something else during that battle. There really is something special about you, Teach. The reason we were all able to keep our cool in the midst of the chaos was because we all trust in you, in your command and in your strength. Everyone here believes that we will win as long as we have you on our side. Our faith in you is borderline religious. You and I, we have what it takes to free Fodlin from the Empire's rule. I know in my heart that we'll make it through to witness the world after all the fighting has ceased. That moment approaches. Will Death's Scythe claim you? Or will I fall to that sword of yours? too long. Oh well, I guess I have no other options. I'll have to take care of this myself. Ah! What? What's happening? I'm keeping you warm so you don't catch cold. Um, I'm sorry. Did I make you uncomfortable? I, I was just surprised. Th thanks, Mercy. Oh, I'm happy to hear you call me that. You know, I seem to find you in here pretty often. Do you have a favorite book? Nah, but it's always real quiet here, so it's where I like to sleep. I see. You always seem so wrapped up in your work. That is, whenever you're not sleeping in the library. Do you have many friends here? No, not really. But don't you want some? Having friends is much more fun than spending all of your time alone. Nah, I don't want people treating me like an outsider. I'm better off alone. An outsider? You? Who would possibly say, 
Oh, so you don't think anyone thinks that? Should I tell you what happened to me before I came here? Oh no, you really don't have to. I didn't mean to bring up such difficult memories. But you know... Everyone here sees you as a friend. Even me. I see you as a good friend. Percy... I'm sorry. I sure like everyone here too, but... It feels like you're... I don't know. It sounds weird maybe, but I think you're something different than a friend. Different? In what way? Do you not like me? No, it's not that. I can't... You know how sometimes you can't explain things? This is that. If I had a sister, I think that might be how it feels being around you. Really? <laughs> That's just as well. You remind me of my little brother. Oh, you got a brother? I do, but I haven't seen him in so long. It's almost like he's not really my brother anymore. But you can count on me if you need anything at all. I'll do my best to help you out. I can count on you for anything? Wow. Leave this to me. Go! Shamir, look out! Kaspar! Ah! Are you alright? Talk to me! <laughs> Shamir! Lower your voice. I'm right here. Look out! The enemy's right! Uh, we're in the infirmary? Correct. It took you a while to wake up. You nearly died protecting me. Why did you do something so reckless? Well, I saw that you were in trouble, and... Is this your attempt to take responsibility for your father's actions? I don't need your pity, Kaspar. Wait a minute. I do feel guilty for what my father did to the Dagdens, but this has nothing to do with that. I saw you were in danger and my body moved before I could even think about it. That's all. You are still a fool. Learn to protect yourself before trying to protect me. There's no point in losing one life to save another. Yours holds just as much value as mine. I understand what you're saying, but... However, I cannot deny that I owe you a debt. Thank you, Kaspar. And... I apologize. Um... For what? You didn't do anything. For when we spoke before. I may have been too harsh. I cannot hold a grudge against someone who would risk his life for mine. That said, you need not worry about me. Uh, yeah. Glad to hear it. But I gotta say, not worrying about you is a lot easier said than done. Thank <laughs> you.